Friends, it's good to be with you. I'm offering this video meditation as a reflection on the Gospel reading for the fifth Sunday of Easter. All around us, we can see signs of heartbreak. Heartbreak in the faces of those who are sick or suffering in some way because of COVID-19. Heartbreak in the faces of those who have lost loved ones. Heartbreak in the faces of those who have lost jobs or who are struggling to keep businesses afloat. Heartbreak in the faces of those who are suffering financial devastation. And yet as I see these images, I see others that cause me to feel heartbreak for another reason also. Even in the face of all of this tragedy, there are those on every side who seem to want to use this tragedy to support their own political positions and rhetoric. Even in the midst of this tragedy, we continue as human beings to hold positions that we think are right and proper in a way that suggests others are wrong. We hold these positions tightly sometimes, and we are unwilling or unable to listen to others who speak other truth. This Sunday, the Gospel reading includes language which has been at the center of Christian arguments for generations and probably forever. The passage comes from the last night of Jesus' life. He has washed the feet of his disciple and spoken of the one who would betray him. He has offered them the commandment that they should love one another as he has loved them. And now he was telling them that they do not need to be afraid, that while he is going to leave them, he will go to a place where they will join him and that he will prepare that place for them. Thomas, though, has a practical question. Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus responds, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Well, now some of you are probably saying, oh yes, that one. There are certainly those who would interpret these words of Jesus in an authoritative, absolute, almost exclusive kind of way. To say that unless people follow Jesus in this very particular way, then somehow they are living beyond the limits of acceptable Orthodox Christianity. And, and I know that argument, and brilliant people have made it over time. And there are those who say, oh yes, well, I know this argument, but really all paths to God are equally true. And they may even reference an earlier chapter in John's Gospel when Jesus, speaking of himself as the Good Shepherd, says, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. Well, let me tell you, I also sat with brilliant scholars and faithful people who would make an argument like this. And so we have competing arguments from people of faith, people of different traditions, people of wisdom. I'm actually tired of that kind of an argument, and some long time ago I gave up participating in it. Instead, I've come to understand these words of Jesus in a deeply personal way. As I continue to grow in my understanding of what it means to live as a follower of Jesus, as a disciple, I've come to see these words as expressing something of a rule of life for all disciples and for the journey we are called to make. For me, Jesus is the way of God. For me, Jesus is the truth of God. For me, Jesus is the life of God. Because of who I am and how my life has unfolded and because of my experiences of God's presence in my life and in the world around me, I can affirm my faith, my belief that Jesus is these things. And I'm not worried about convincing other people in rational ways. 
and I'm not worried about sitting with people whose faith experience is much different than mine. In fact, I enjoy learning from people with faiths and expressions of faith that are much different than mine. It's not a threat. I wonder if in this time in our life, this time in our world, perhaps we need to find a way forward that isn't about arguing over the position that one of us or another of us holds, but instead seeing that the way of Jesus, the way that Jesus offers us to God, is a way that can cut through the chase and go right to the heart and can lead us beyond those perfectly human arguments. Perhaps rather than arguing about truth that is beyond our understanding in human terms, we can accept with gratitude all of the truth about God that we can learn through God made flesh in Jesus. Perhaps rather than looking for life and the satisfaction of our lifely desires in other places, we can look to the life that Jesus offered on the cross in his obedience to his loving Father. And perhaps that life, that abundant life, can be the life we seek every day. Perhaps rather than worrying about whether we should help support the economy or worry about the concern of spreading further the COVID disease, we ought to have capacity for both. And that rather than arguing, we ought to get on with lives of compassion and healing and reconciliation. Perhaps as we are able to do that work, we will find that God provides us with the capacity to do more than we can ask or imagine. Perhaps as we get on with that work, we will also find strength and clarity and wisdom all from God in Jesus that will allow us to break down some of the barriers that mean some people in our world, those who are older or of color or poorer, suffer more in the face of tragedies like coronavirus and hurricanes and other great tragedies. Perhaps we will be able to get past all of those things and learn to rest content in the experience of Jesus as the way to God, Jesus as the truth of God, Jesus as the life of God. Friends, I may very well have said something to challenge you as I'm sorry, I have not intended to offend, but simply to suggest that as we live in the power of God's Holy Spirit, as followers of Jesus Christ and as children of God, there may very well be another path forward.